Ladies and gentlemen, Lake Oswego, Oregon, right? Yeah, well, just call it Portland. Portland. Close. Yeah, yeah. But then, then we associate you with, like, all the stuff we saw in Portlandia, and that's not exactly wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the first episode many years ago, and then I stopped. It actually was a very funny show, but it, it, it certainly didn't make your neck of the woods uh, that uh, wonderful. Everybody seemed a little too uh, into, uh, 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 what we, can we call it, the uh, herbal lifestyle and things like that. Probably you know? not as bad as they made out. Probably not as bad as they made out. So how is everything in the land where you can commit suicide if you want to? Ah, well, it's it's very hot. We're having a hot spell, but you know, that's that's everywhere in the world above the equator right now. I had a $500 uh, electric bill uh, last month because of the from, heat. From cooling? For, oh yeah, from the air conditioners. I have, you know, two, two air conditioners working at a time here. Uh, I have a, um, uh, the one in the bedroom, and then I have the one uh, in here in the studio, which I have to keep on a lot because I got to keep the equipment cool. Right. Yeah. You know. So uh, I'm lucky. I'm on the first floor, so no heat, so no sun beats down on me, and it always cools down to 50s overnight. So I open the windows early, early in the morning and cool down the house. I hardly ever turn on the air conditioner. Wow. wow. I'm pretty lucky. In fact, it's cheaper for me, and it's opposite you. Cheaper for me in the summer than it is in the winter because I have electric heat. Yeah. Anyway, so what is what is new in your life? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, then thank you for calling, and uh, we'll. <laughs> what about your life? My life. Uh, uh, I've been going to uh, th uh, physical therapy. For what? Uh, for my for my numbness in my feet. Oh, what did they say about that? Uh, it's a nerve and a uh, uh, my my spine has uh, arthritis, and then the nerve is being pinched, so. And so, will this fix it? Uh, who knows? You know. Uh, oh. We'll see. I imagine. Mm. You know. Mm. I'm hoping. Okay. I wish I had a list of things that happened this week that were interesting but you know what's happened to me in my old age is I go to I go to sleep on Sunday night and I wake up Saturday morning and I don't know what happened in between <laughs> I can't remember what I did each day <laughs> oh wow wow well anyway uh let me see here first of all your health is good right doesn't oh, seem yes. like you have a problem at all right yes and uh um uh and so your health is uh, I guess better than mine now because my feet are numb. Ah, yeah. Well, you know, I just, uh, I, I, I hold that health in, uh, uh, in a precious little place in me uh, because I never expected it to be. And I'm about back to normal. You know, I, it's, I had a year-long bad episode is how I'm beginning to think of it. And yeah. now life goes on as it was before, <laughs> more yeah. or less, almost. More or less, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? You know what? I I will tell you with this physical therapy that I'm doing, I hate it because they give you homework. Well, of course, you should do this stuff every day. Yeah, I have to do these these exercises every day. And the 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 guy I had the other day put it the best way I've ever heard it put. He said, "Don't think of this as doing exercises. Think of it as taking medicine. You take a pill every day. You oh. do these every day. You that know. makes sense." He said, and, I that, like that. "And that will make you better." Mm hmm I like that. So far, I can't say that things are incredible, but you know what the hell. Listen yeah. to us, two old people two going old on farts. about their health. Well, you know the thing God's is, sake. the thing is, we came to this point where we could say this. You know. That's true. How many, how That's many true. you know, I mean. Uh, when the big events in your life are all about health, oh, I don't know. You know, wrong. You, you know what, um, what Marjorie said, and it's true. Whenever we go out to dinner with a group of older people, uh, the discussion immediately goes to, to, to medicine, health, health. Uh, uh, what's you know? Wh what's wrong with you? How, is it your your thing getting better? You know, it it's not like in the old days. It was like so. Who who'd you like? Who'd you have sex with lately? 
you know. Uh, I never said that or even was asked that. Oh, uh, but no, okay. uh, I well, get among, your point. Among guys, we would do that. But now it's like, oh, I, I've got this thing and whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, this morning I got an email that a friend for many years, more than 10 years, who I never met in person, an internet friend, uh, had died yesterday. And, you know, it, it's not like a, a 10-year-old or even a 40-year-old dying. She was 89. I mean, what do you expect? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, and I wonder if that's also behind our questions. When, you know, there used to be a joke when I was younger about when people ask you, how are you? They're not asking for a litany of your health problems. But it turns into that when we get old. And I wonder if that is partially what it's about that we're checking in to see how we each are that we're still here sort of you know? yeah yeah i think that might be part of it yeah yeah uh, and, and, and and the litany of what's wrong is kind of a recitation of how close we might be to not being here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah yeah of course when people say so how are you they really don't care they really, how are you means the same thing as hello. Yeah, and how are you? So if you then say, well, my back's been bothering me and this uh, this uh, pollen is just killing me, uh, they don't care. They really don't want to know. And you know this because? Because I'm willing to tell everybody an update on my <laughs> health at any given moment. It drives my it drives my Nothing wife. Nothing has changed. It, it's it drives my wife nuts. Well, now it's her job and not yours. You know. That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Drove me nuts too. But I wasn't. I don't know if I was as much of a hypochondriac when I was young. I guess I was. Yeah. Yes, you were. Yeah. Yes, you were. Yeah. Uh, but I could never. I, there was a time when I wasn't though. You know when I I always found that I was hypochondriac when I had nothing, no problems. You were looking for something. Yeah. If I was out of work and looking for work and things were terrible and I had to do something about it and blah, 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 and whatever, I didn't even think about my health. And then when everything is fine, it's my health. Alex, you've been remarkably healthy, like me, yeah. all your life. Yeah. No, don't worry. I, what, why do you even, why all those years did you ever, ever even think about it? Uh... I don't know. I think uh, maybe it's a preoccupation with me. And were either of your parents that way? I don't no, remember no, that they were. No, no, not at all. You know, um, maybe it was something when I was a kid that I don't know. You know, some some place like my mother didn't pay attention to me unless I was sick. <laughs> you right. know, my mother didn't pay attention to me. It's an excuse for everything. And my mother paid too much attention to me. That was the yes, problem. Yes, well, Jewish mothers, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm claustrophobic because she was so smothering. <laughs> oh, I don't know that that's the that's reason. Why that, okay. I, that's why now I. it's my mother's fault I can't get into an MRI machine, okay? <laughs> I've never had to, so I don't know. It doesn't sound pleasant. They never did an MRI on you with all the, the chazerai that was going on in your yep. life? Really? Yep. All kinds of other scans and tests and well, stuff, but not that one. I, I wasn't going to go to the neurologist because I knew that the first thing the neurologist would say, well, we'll do an MRI. And he didn't. He said, we'll get an X-ray. Mm -hmm. You know, and he could see it in the X-ray. So, yeah. What the hell? I didn't have to go into that coffin. I No, I refuse to. It has to be like one of these open MRIs. I've, I've already... Is I've, there such a thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's oh, an I MRI. You go in, you just sit there, and the thing does what it has to do. There's another one where you kind of lie there, but there, you're not in a tube. You know, so... They do have open MRIs because I, they, because I hope I'm done with those sorts of tests. You well, know? they know no. that the biggest problem with MRIs is that certain people are, in my case, like just amazingly claustrophobic. I call it terminally claustrophobic. Look at this you room know. and this picture that you're in. That you've got two doors behind you. They're both closed. The the computer on your right seems to be very near you, and the shelves with the DVDs are pretty close. And that's okay. Yeah. That doesn't doesn't bother me, no. Okay. That does, no. It, it, I have high ceilings. My ceilings are to almost twelve feet high. 
Uh, and uh, hard to clean and even if they I were lower, I would. Like <laughs> I only feel claustrophobia when I'm closed in. When I'm closed in. So, what do you think about the latest developments with our political system these days? You mean uh, uh, pr President uh, Trump? Sure, I do. Is there any other topic in politics? Do we have to refer to him as president? Is that is it possible that we? Yes, it's the it's it's not him. It is the office, and you should. Oh, I should turn this on. Uh, uh, ah, isn't that cute on air? Yeah, yeah. I always turn that on before I do anything, and and this isn't going to match up because we record this earlier in the day, and uh, 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 so when I finally do the show, I'm probably not going to be wearing the same shirt. And, mm. I'm not, and the light will have already been on, so so maybe I'll remember to leave it off tonight so it matches when I... Don't worry so. about it. I'll bet nobody really minds. Yeah. Um, our president, I've, I've gotten to the point where I wish I could say I've just absolutely given up on worrying about it. You know, I just, he's, he's an asshole. He is treating the presidency in a way in which he's not respecting the presidency. You know, they say you should respect your president. Well, I don't think he respects the presidency. No, he doesn't. He doesn't even know what it's about. He doesn't know history. He doesn't know politics. He doesn't. He certainly doesn't know foreign affairs. And he's getting us in deep doo doo. As it, it he acts like Willy Wonka just gave him the golden ticket, you know, and that he can do anything he wants to do. You know, you can the just... thing that's making me, there's so many things that terrify me about what's happened since he became president, but the one that keeps eating at me and eating at me and eating at me are the little kids. And now this week there's another deadline for matching them up with their parents, and the federal government is saying that there are hundreds that will never be done. I heard them say this morning... Because, because the parents have been deported already. Well, this is what I'm getting to. And they said that... Because so many parents have been deported, um, it's, they're not going to go to those other countries to try to match them up. You're the one who snatched the kids away. It's our responsibility, America's responsibility, to do that, to match up the kids wherever they are. And we're apparently just not going to do it. Hundreds and hundreds of little kids wow. yeah, who it, we it, snatched yeah. away illegally and will never know who their real parents were. And you know what he said when he was asked about this? Well, you just shouldn't have done something illegal. When they weren't doing anything illegal, they were seeking asylum, almost all of them. Yeah. That's not illegal. That's yeah. legal in our well, country. Well, it's just he has no sense of, uh, of, of decency, you know? Yes. I mean, I just... It's I, worse I, than that. It goes further than there that. There are some people who truly are worried about his mental capabilities. I don't have any knowledge or experience to be able to say anything about that. Yeah, but um, still, there's a reason to worry. You know, yes. he. I mean, he acts in ira in, in irrational ways, uh, and and it's 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 pretty terrible actually the way he reacts. You know, so I mean, uh, it, it, it it's. It's embarrassing. It is just so very embarrassing. It's funny, I said with a friend the other day on the phone that I'm so glad I don't, I'm not traveling in Europe as I used to do so often for work because I'm really ashamed to, you know, hold up and say, oh, I'm an American, you know. Um, what, what we've done here on, on in so many different ways, different occasions, it is so embarrassing. I don't know how much of it is illegal. Here's something I don't get. It has to do with the new Supreme Court nominee, but other things in general, mm -hmm. is that a president, remember when Nixon said, if a president does it, it's not illegal, I mean, which is just outrageous, mm -hmm. but they're carrying it to this president by saying whatever goes on with the Mueller uh, investigation and the Southern District of New York and whatever other investigations are going on, whatever they find that might or might not be legal in terms of Trump's behavior is okay. Nothing will be done because he's a sitting president. I, isn't that why we have a vice president? What, not talking about whether you like this one or not, but isn't the whole point 
is that when the president can no longer fulfill his duties, that's why we've got a backup over here in the corner. Yeah. And and why should he not be prosecuted for the same kind of crimes any, you or me or anybody else would be prosecuted for? Well, uh, uh, unfortunately, he can't be. But he, there, is a, there is a method to being able to do it, and it's called impeachment. There's a difference. Uh, the president can't be indicted while he's in office. But Who he, says? Is that in the Constitution? It's somewhere, I don't know, somewhere, either that or the Supreme Court deemed it as so or whatever. But that doesn't matter. We still have the means to be able to deal with him. If he, if he went and shot somebody, we could not indict him for killing that person, but we could impeach him for killing that person. That's wrong. I'm, I'm saying that. I'm not quoting well, anybody. You know, once that, he, that to one, me is on its face wrong. Once he's out Why of, is he different from you well, or one, me once in that respect? Once he's out of office, all bets are off. No, but then aren't there statutes of limitation then? Uh, there are all kinds of crimes that if too much time goes by, you can't prosecute people. Listen, I will go out and get a law degree and get back to you on that. <laughs> I will hold my breath. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I'll just get a, a law degree and, and figure that one out. Um, you know what I saw today? This was amazing. Uh, he, you know, he still, most, pre most people when they become president, put their things in a blind trust so that while oh, they're yeah. in well, office, oh, they don't, they, go there? They don't oh. deal with their business. He hasn't, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's still making ties, shirts, jackets. He's still making vodka. He's still making any number of products, all of which and none of which are made in the USA. No. They're made in China. They're made in Ethiopia. Uh, we, we, they were looking at uh, uh, his daughter's company. She's, she, when China, the conditions in China were bad, she she moved to Ethiopia with her stuff, but they don't make it here in the U.S. They're not no. giving Americans jobs, turning out their products. She's also exempt from tariffs of her products when they're brought back to this country. Why is that? They were special. I read that they were specially exempt from his new tariffs. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we live today. I mean, he looks at the at being president as as his own, what could we call it, his own personal treasury. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, I mean, like, I how much money do we spend so every weekend he can go play golf? You know, another thing just came up just before we started this interview on on whatever was on television before this we started this. Um, that there's that that you just mentioned and I can't remember the other one it just went out of my head forget it oh god it's wonderful to be old yeah yeah <laughs> what happens is you you have to go back to the very beginning of the uh, uh, and and uh, then bring yourself up to the moment and then you remember what it was as soon as with we me, hang up it will come with me I you. have to start with so I was born <laughs> And eventually, after about an hour, we come back. And I, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Conversations between two old people are just impossible. I think I told you this last time that I went to the... Did I tell you when I went to the neurologist, he asked me a bunch of questions? And no, you didn't tell no, me this. Oh, and what, uh, he said, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I'm, I'm kind of retired, but I'm doing a podcast talk show. He says, on what? I said, politics. And he said, we're... You know, so then he asked you who the president wait, is? No, so, no, so he asked me, do you, okay, do you, so he had some questions he wanted to see, is he my cognition or whatever? Yes. And he said, who's the president? And I said, Donald Trump, unfortunately. He said, who's the governor of the state of New York? And you'd, oh. And he said, okay, who's the mayor of New York City? Are you serious? Yes. Where is your brain? Did you forget or you just don't pay attention to that part of politics? I, I, apparently, I don't pay that much attention to that part of politics because when I do a sh show at night, I'm playing to a national audience, so we talk about national stuff. I don't talk uh -huh. about what's going on in New York. Right. And so I couldn't immediately come up with Cuomo and de Blasio, 
which I can do right now. Uh -huh. uh, and it made it into my medical record. He could not remember ah, that's right. who the governor <laughs> and, and the mayor was of New York. Did he ask you what year it is? Well, yeah, he asked me where I lived and, you know, things like that. What day were you born? Blah, blah, blah. What does this have to do with your feet? Uh, it, I Somehow I talked to my friend Shecky, who was also seeing a neurologist, about an entirely different situation. And he said, oh, he gave me the same test. <laughs> he said, but he never asked me about the governor of the state or the mayor of New York but City. But I don't understand why this would... Was this just generally checking your cognition? Yeah. Or was it related to your feet? No, it was, I guess it, it has something to do with the nervous system because another neurologist asked another friend the same questions, so. Oh, jeez. You know, so I imagine, you know, so. Uh, so, they, so, so the thing with, with physicians, I guess now, is that after you've passed a certain birthday, they assume you might be afflicted with cognition problems. I have cognition problems, but it's funny that I, as I say, you know, they they always say you can always remember the latest stuff, or the older stuff, but older the stuff, stuff that just happened, you can't. And you know, I mean, uh, I'll I'll sit there and there's some movie on from 1930, and I can tell you who the actress is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but um, but I have to tell you about that. I, I in fact, in fact, in fact. The other day, I was talking to I th maybe I was talking in the air. I was talking to Shecky, somebody, about when I was a kid. One of the most tragic things I remember was a story about a little girl stuck in a well. Mm -hmm. And now I, I can't. Remember that story and now too. I can't, now I can't remember her name. But I came up with that name immediately. Uh, I was just going to say that recently incidents from my childhood and by that it's apparent it seems to have been more than nine or ten years old but not quite an adult yet yeah. have come back to me more vividly than in the past not yeah. very often occasionally but things i haven't thought of in decades even have come yeah. back. and before i used to question that thing about old people more easily remember older events, the newer events, and like I said when we first started talking, my day-to-day -day memory has gotten to the point where I go to bed on Sunday night and I wake up Saturday morning as far as I know about what happened in between. Yeah, I was just <laughs> looking up to see if I could find the name of that uh, that girl. And, we'll live and, without and, the name right well, now. Well, all they, they came up with was uh, uh, Jessica, Jessica McClure, who was the latest kid to be stuck no, in the no, well. No, 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 no. There's one way back when we I were know, quite young. I know, I know, and I had the name. I had the name. The name just came off the top of my head. Yeah, and good that, for you. Yeah. I, I think that that was the of first course, one now that I'm was worried covered I can't, live by television. Now I'm worried because I, uh, I can't remember it. Don't so, worry about it. I mean, uh, you, do you really need to know? Yeah. I don't worry if I don't need to know. I guess. I guess. Yeah. But it's early. Maybe I'll, rem I'll, probably, I'll probably call you back around 4 o'clock this afternoon and go, oh, it was blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I had well, the name just like Well, I don't know how much like anybody's going to like all this health talk, but... Um. Well, listen, I, when people call my show now, uh, I, I call it Alex's waiting room uh, because they all have medical problems, every last one of them. <laughs> But you're not a doctor. I, the, I have an old. I have old ones. Uh, one's got. Uh, let's see here. He had uh, his prostate removed, and now he's got heart problems. So he's got to get angioplasty and a whole bunch of stuff like that. Uh, I got another one who maybe is going to lose his foot. Uh, I and then my, the youngest one is in a wheelchair. What is youngest? What year is that? Forty-two. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's like every one of them has a problem, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I keep talking about how my health, blah, 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 and then I thought about it, and I said, I'm better than any of these people. You mean know, healthy? Healthier. Better. I'm not better, right. and they're, they're a wonderful group of people. Excuse me if I insulted you. Uh, but, <laughs> um, you know, so... Go right ahead. You can talk health. People are used to that on this show. People griping about their health, and you know, it's. I'm not anymore. I'm amazed. I'm quite healthy now again. It was a really, really rough year. I never. Nobody should go through anything like that. But it's just 
amazing how good I feel and I'm back to, you know, there are some residual things in terms of a couple of, even the medications have dropped way down the number. I saw a couple that I'll have to take for the rest of my life. But beyond that, I don't feel very much different be- than before this all happened to me. And I am so grateful, so grateful. Yeah, you're a little scarred up from the operations and things like but that. But it's not on anywhere where anybody can see it. Right, right. I have a very strange looking belly button these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they cut right down the middle, clear to the belly button. And, yeah, um, yeah, so how's it strange? It's neither an innie well, or an Well, it used to be outie. just a nice, neat, round, any belly button. Yeah. Now it's just a knot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, talk about something you'll never need again. You know, yes, I, I exactly. never wondered why the navel just didn't heal up completely. I mean, we had no use for it once we were born. <laughs> but it was such a nice, neat one, and it just sat there, didn't do, like, as you say, doesn't do anything, and it was nice and neat, nothing nothing you would notice about it. Now it's noticeably kind of off kilter. It's like God said to himself, well, I'll feed the kid and everything nourishment through the belly button, and then when they, he uh, is born... Uh, the uh, the umbilical cord will either fall off or we learned how to cut it, and uh, then he will have a, he'll have a navel. And I, he never God never figured out a way to make the navel disappear. It was like well, I don't it, think it, it, it was like to. it was like the inlet in a balloon. Don't you, know? you think if you were at the beach and everybody was walking around with perfectly flat space there, nobody had a belly button, that wouldn't look a little weird. Well, it wouldn't look weird because we'd accept it. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, just my, me and my terminal logic. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Okay. I could go on with this for hours. I really could. It, it, I'm not so sure the audience could stand it. Oh, I think they can take it. They better take it. Fuck them if they don't like it. You know. Anyway, uh, that, right. that, ladies and gentlemen, is time well spent with my ex-wife. The inimitable Ronnie Bennett, who can be found at timegoesby.net, where she does some spiffy writing. Well, I I remember that. I'm still trying to remember the name of the baby in the well. And the other day, I had it like that. (laughs) And gone. And gone. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.